In one of my previous videos, I showed this Ericsson 10th set boring head that I had bought at a, at a tool show. And it came with this shank, which is a one inch, I believe, straight shank. Uh, that's not super handy for me. So I'm going to trade it out onto an R8 shank. The problem is the thread size on this boring head is 5 8 18 instead of the one that's normally used on say criterion boring heads. I can't find for the life of me an R8 boring head shank with a 5 8 18 taper. So what I did find is a standard one that fits a criterion boring head and I am going to hopefully anyway successfully turn this down and rethread it to 5 8 18. This part should be hard. Uh, I'm not entirely sure since this is an imported boring head shank. A good way to tell whether it's hard or not is the surface finish. Mild steel or unhardened steel will generally have sort of a, um, usually a torn surface. It depends on the alloy of steel, um, but it won't necessarily be a nice surface finish. Whereas hardened steels do tend to be quite shiny after they're machined. A couple of notes before we begin. I put this into my four jaw chuck so I could dial it in perfectly and I gripped onto the slightly undercut section of the R8 taper. So this is not actually being located on the machine. Uh, there's a ground section at the very end, which you can't see, and then there's the ground taper, which I use to dial the part in. <laughs> Can't really tell, that doesn't really look like a hardened steel surface, but I guess we'll be able to tell eventually once we get down to the, uh, the finished diameter. I'm running this relatively slow, uh, 550 RPM, since I don't really know the condition of the steel. Looks like it probably is hardened, uh, which is a good sign. It's not terribly hard though, the carbide is cutting it just fine. Now that I've got my diameter established, I can go ahead and start machining down to specs. And just for my own edification, I went ahead and wrote all the specs onto this business card and I'm shooting for somewhere in the middle of the major diameter range, which would be about 619 thousandths of an inch. I also went ahead and wrote my pitch diameter range, which determines the class of fit, minor diameter, so I know where to put my thread relief back here, and then this one is the measurement over wires. Um, I don't have a thread micrometer that will work with 18 threads per inch in this size, so uh, I'm going to use thread wires, and I always find it easier just to take the constant that's in the thread wires chart and add it to the pitch diameter range, so that all I'm looking for are those two numbers right there. That is definitely machining like hardened steel. That last cut I pulled out a little bit rather than dragging across because I want to make sure that I can get a good surface finish to measure off of. I'm going to actually let this cool down before I measure it. It is not burning hot, but it's toasty enough that it would affect my measurement. All right, this is cooled back down to room temperature now. We've got a pretty good size range on this, so I don't think I really necessarily needed to make it uh, totally room temperature, but uh, it's always good practice. So I'm about uh, 653 right now. Again, I'm shooting for 619. Mm -hmm. 
just a little under 620 thousandths, which is within our range for major diameter, so we're good there. I'm also going to go ahead and make a light facing cut here so that it meets up nicely on the boring head and I don't have any issues. Alright, that's looking nice and smooth. Next thing, I'll go ahead and put the thread relief in and I'm going to use my parting tool for that. I'm going to slow down the speed for the cut, but first I'm going to touch off on the end of the piece so that I know where the edge of my parting tool is. I just touched off lightly in this corner on the diameter, and I'm going to go ahead and punch that into my DRO as the diameter that I just mentioned a little while ago. Now that I have that punched in, I can go ahead back to my shoulder and I can move in until I get to smaller than the minor diameter of the thread. That way I don't end up with any threads inside my thread relief. Okay. That looks good. Last thing before threading is I'm going to put a chamfer on the end. I've said it before in almost every one of my threading videos, 100% of the time, no exceptions, always put a chamfer at the beginning of your thread. This makes your job a lot easier because threading without a chamfer is going to raise a huge burr and you won't have to try to remove that after the fact and potentially damage your thread. I've got my threading tool set up and this is a carbide insert one. It is really small and it'll fit into the thread relief but just barely. So I'm going to have to be really careful not to run into the shoulder here. Uh, because of that I'm running the lathe as slow as it'll go which is 50 RPM. Now I've already done all the setup to get this perpendicular. I've shown all that in other videos so I'm not going to show it again here. There's my first scratch pass. I gotta say the pucker factor is quite high on that. I'm just going to use my old part to make sure that I'm getting the right thread count and that looks good. Just a pro tip here, in instances like this where I'm threading right up against the shoulder, I'm looking at the left hand side of the tool, I'm not looking at the threads at all. So that was about 69 thousandths in and they're starting to look like threads so I'm going to go ahead and take a measurement and see where we are. So again this is 5 8 18. If I look at my threading chart here it tells me I should use the 32 thousandths wires and then this number over here is the constant it's 0 0.04789 and that is the number that I added to my pitch diameter range to get my measurement over wires right here. So these numbers though are what I'm going to be actually looking for. I'm trying to get it somewhere within that range when I put the three wires on the thread. I've already cleaned out all the chips in here and in the chip pan below, which this lathe doesn't have a very big chip pan, uh, so it shouldn't be too hard to find if I lose one of these wires. Uh, I've shown this trick before, but when I'm using wires I'll put a little dab of grease on my fingertip and put that on the thread and that'll hold the two wires up here on top. That just makes it a whole lot easier to use these without dropping them. Now I can hold the third wire down below and get my measurement. Uh, we are just over 650 thousandths, so about 15 thousandths over our measurement over the wires range. We're at 
it's 635 and 6 tenths. We're just a tiny, tiny little bit, two tenths of a thousandth over our measurement over wires range. So I'm gonna move in one last thousandths of an inch. Oh, and we're within the range. We're at 6.32 and probably three or four tenths. It looks like three tenths. Uh, measurement over wires, the low end was 6.30 and seven tenths. So we're good. Oh well, yeah, fits great. That's going to be fantastic. And now I can use this sweet tenth set boring head that I bought on my mill. All right. That's a job well done. I couldn't show you earlier, but you can see I was just clamping on this dark section. I was not clamping on the ground part of the arbor or, of course, on the taper. I did use the taper to dial in the part. Of course, you guys may be actually interested in uh, looking at the boring head a little bit. This is an Ericsson 10th set, and you've got this graduated ring. These are thousandths of an inch. You can move this knurled ring by hand. Uh, a little easier when it's in the machine but that actually slides the boring bar in and out then you also have a vernier scale up here or people keep telling me i mispronounce it and it's actually vernier anyway however it's pronounced you can use this to get down to tenths of a thousandth on diameter so if you just need to dust off that last little bit of fine frog fur that's your guy right there I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please consider hitting the like and subscribe buttons down below. And leave me a comment while you're down there. Let me know what you like or dislike about what I'm doing. It helps me improve the channel. Speaking of which, please consider checking out my Patreon page as well. Every little bit of support helps. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Yeehaw, that one got pretty close.